Welcome back to the Christian Business Breakdown. Last week, we talked about manifesting. It was kind of like opening up a little bit of a can of worms because it's it's a hot topic that a lot of people are talking about in the world, but that in Christianity, we're not really talking about as much. And this episode is going to be very similar. So I just want to put a disclaimer in here. Sarah and I have been talking about this, praying about this, laboring over this, discussing it, praying, planning, all of this stuff, because we really, it's very important for us to communicate that we don't know everything about this episode or that we don't know everything about what we're going to be talking about today, which is mindset. But we have talked about it. We have thought about it. We have been in God's word about it. And so we want you to take this put your critical thinking caps on, like we said last week, and to really hear what we're saying and, and just interpret it for yourself, but also really like rooting it in God's word. And we may not agree about everything. And that is the beauty of the body of Christ is that we don't have to agree, agree about everything. We can have good conversations rooted in the Bible and then love each other and come back to the truth that we do agree on that Jesus loved us and he saved, saved us from our sin so that we can live an abundant life and everything else is just gravy. And so, yeah, I would invite you to put on that critical thinking cap to be discerning, to be partnered with God. God in this and just know that our hearts are to invite conversation and to point ultimately to God. And then the last thing I want to say here is that I heard a quote once that said, don't scream where scripture whispers and don't whisper where scripture screams, which basically means don't th take things out of context. Don't put words in God's mouth when he did not say certain things. And so we need to sometimes hold the Bible and verses with open hands and to be asking God to help us interpret those things. And the Bible does not speak directly to mindset. And so we don't have specific, I mean, we have verses that talk about our minds and things like that. And we're going to go into those verses today, but realizing that the Bible does not say mindset is good or mindset is bad. And so like, or mindset is a sin or mindset is not a sin. And so we just need to make sure that we are critically thinking about these things and hearing what God has to say about them. So yeah. It's with really, that being said, it really is up to us to partner with God to discern and decide. And we have a responsibility to do that and to to know God's word in so that we have an answer when someone asks us about these kinds of things in our business. So with all that being said, we're going to talk about mindset. And that is kind of a hot topic. And um, getting your mind focused on the right things can be a game changer. And it is really important in your business and in that. And we're going to explore what that means and how we can talk about that within the frame and within the context of biblical truth and not what the world has to say about it. So I want to start with a verse, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, which says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So we need to seek to trust and learn and not just keep our minds stuck on what the world is saying. Uh, but really trusting in God and leaning not on ourselves and on the world. And the world has a lot to say about this. So I'm excited to to break down this topic a little bit today um, and then to continue this conversation, you know, reach out to us on Instagram in the DMs, send us an email. We'd love to, to continue this conversation. We offer an empowerment call with us for an hour. Um, this would be a great topic to talk about, especially if you're out there as a coach, you know, if you're leading someone in your business and, and there is talk about mindset, let's, you know, have a conversation around that and how you can be encouraging your clients with a Christian worldview of mindset. So let's break it down and let's talk about what mindset is and think of it as what your mind is set on. So when we think about mindset, I mean, it's really broken down into two words of what your mind is being set on. Mm -hmm. And so having that is helpful. And one of the definitions I found that was very helpful, just I Googled mindset definition. And one of the definitions I found was a habitual or characteristic mental attitude that determines how you will interpret and respond to situations. Ooh, that's so that good. doesn't sound, yeah, it's not very woo woo. It's not like, it's just a very like practical, mm -hmm. this is what it is. It's a mm -hmm. mental attitude that, that make how you respond and interpret things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a pretty fair way to look at it. But there's also the bent of what the world says about mindset and mm -hmm. then what the Bible says mm -hmm. about mindset. So that's really what we're going to, I don't think that there's any like conflict around what mindset is and that it's like every, your mind is set on things and our yes. minds are very powerful. So like, yes. it is a thing, like it's not right. that we can deny it. Right. So, but from looking at it from different perspectives is going to be really important. So 
thinking about it in the terms of what the world says our minds should be set on and what oftentimes we heard. And some of this ties back into manifesting like what we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. And if you missed that episode, I really highly encourage you to go Mm -hmm. listen to that before you listen to this one, because we kind of preface a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about today. But when the world is talking about mindset, it's very much self focused. It's Mm -hmm. very much on achievement, success, happiness, money, anything that we're doing that our own effort, self-motivation, positive thinking, all of those things are what the world is telling us our mind needs to be set on. And that's really a focus that we can fall so easily into. I think, you know, sometimes we think, oh, I would never do that. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I catch myself so many times a day, (laughs) self-focused, you know, trying to build up motivation on my own, trying to figure out all these things on my own, trying to be positive. Because then if I'm positive, maybe this will actually happen. We buy into the lie that we can just work harder and then we'll be successful if we have this right mindset. And so knowing that that's what the world says about it helps us to be able to identify when we're falling into that trap, really. Yeah. And so the world, when the world focuses on yourself, what does God call us to do? He calls us to focus on him and his kingdom and his word and his Mm -hmm. righteousness and pursuing, you know, godliness, you know, goodness, righteousness, self-control, you know, Mm -hmm. all the, all the fruits of the spirit and all the things that are in there. That's what God calls us to, Mm -hmm. to be on Mm -hmm. now. Does that mean that our mindset, like the way that the world is saying things, there's say it that way. Does that mean that the things that the world is saying are a hundred percent wrong? No, because there is power in the way our minds work. But we need to make sure that we're not just doing it for selfish ambition and that mm-hmm. we're all about ourselves and consumed by that. And that's what the world is consumed with. How can how can I make my life better? And that that's the trick is we really want to be the glory of God is our ultimate goal. And that's so hard to do. It's so hard to do. It is hard to do. And, and what I love about mindset is we can get to the same end result because money and wealth and happiness are not bad things. No, but they're the, not. The difference is the process that I took to get there. You know, the yes. worldly process is selfish and self-motivated and internal. And I have the power to do this versus the mind set on God and being transformed in that process and being made into someone new because we follow God's plan for it. And ultimately, like we talked about last week, that's what I want. Whatever the end result is, I want to go on a path with God and not by myself. That feels terrifying. I thank you for bringing that point up. I love that so much because I think as Christians, so often we're told that those things are bad. Mm -hmm. It's bad if you want money. It's Mm -hmm. bad if you want happiness. Mm -hmm. It's bad. And that is not at all what God says. Mm -mm. It's not, but it is the route that you're taking to get there. So thank you for that distinction. Mm -hmm. That is, that is so good. So let's think about it this way. What is your mind set on? Is it set on yourself, your goals, your money, your family? You know, again, those aren't necessarily Mm -mm. bad things. But if you're set on God and his glory and his way and the gifts that he has given you and the way that he has made you to be, it just feels so much better that it, again, it's not, it's not on me. It's not on Mm -hmm. my achievement. It's not how good I am Mm -hmm. or how bad I am, which is even the better part because we Mm -hmm. know we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. (laughs) Right. Right. but that's so important. So I love the verse in Philippians uh, 4, 8 that says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, anything is excellent or praiseworthy. Think about such things. And so if we can be thinking about those things and then the other stuff fits in there as well, like we can mm-hmm. filter those other things mm-hmm. through those thoughts. Mm-hmm. And that's where the magic happens. Part of what's true is our identity in Christ of who he's created us to be and the work that he has for us to do. All of those things are good. Motherhood is good. Being a good wife is good, but not when it comes at the expense of following what God has asked you to do. And that's that's really what Christian mindset is about is thinking about what's true and noble and admirable because that focuses on God and not ourselves. Yep. And then lastly, as a part of this Colossians three, two, just encourages believers, set your mind on things above and not on earthly Mm -hmm. things. That's what God's called us to be thinking Mm -hmm. about God and his kingdom and what that looks like and how we can be 
you know, living that out in our life. And if we can start thinking about that, it's one of those things. If you can memorize one verse, maybe this is the verse that you memorize. It's Mm -hmm. super short. It's super sweet. It's like, set my mind on something on Mm -hmm. things above, not on the earth, set Mm -hmm. my mind on things above and not on the earth. And when you start to get all those things in your brain, Mm -hmm. like what is my mind focused on? And Mm -hmm. that would be a really easy, quick, easy way to start putting God, God's word into your heart and focusing on when it comes to mindset. So there are things that we all agree on this. I think here's another thing. So overall, I think we all agree. Mindset is, is a good thing. And, but making sure that you're doing it in the right, in the right situations and in the right doing your mindset and the right mindset, having the right attitudes when it comes to it, because within mindset, whether you're thinking about God or you're thinking about worldly things, we can have two different kinds of branches of that. And that looks like having a fixed mindset or having a growth mindset. And this is kind of a new ish topic that I, our parents would, our parents probably still look at this and go, that's dumb. But those of us who are now, you know, starting to really critically think about some of this stuff, it is so true in that, like, if you are fixed on one thing and you're like, nope, not going to work, can't happen. Uh, that's not right. You know, if we're thinking in that respect versus how can this be true? How can I filter this through God's word? How can I think about this differently? Having that growth versus fixed mindset, if you've never heard of that concept before, there's so much good stuff out there. Again, you have to be careful about where you're finding this information, but just being able to think back about, are you having a fixed and scarce mindset of like, there's not enough clients out there. There's not enough work out there. How can I be making money because I don't know what I'm doing? That is like a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset of like, okay, how do I step into that? How do I use my gifts that God has given me to make those things happen? How does this idea that somebody brought to me, how can I tweak that and change that to make it true for my business and work for me? There's also the idea that there's also the idea that what you believe to be true about God is how you act that out in your life. And so if you Mm. have a fixed mindset about God, that God isn't actually capable to do things, that God doesn't actually love me, that God, you know, is limited or finite, then we're going to act that out in our lives versus yes. if it, it, and I don't know that it's necessarily a growth mindset, but it's, it's an actual understanding of God's characteristics and who he is and that he never changes, that he is both loving and just, that he is both righteous and merciful, that when we understand who he is, then we have a growth mindset because we know that all things are possible through him and we can actually Mm -hmm. live that out in our lives. And so it just goes back to everything we've talked about, about manifesting and mindset is what is your mind fixed on? fixed on, not a fixed mindset, but what am I focused on? And what do I know to be true about God? Because when I know, you know, a little bit about who he is and what he's capable of, my mind can only be open to growth and new things and um, possibilities because I understand who God actually is. That's, that's such great. There's, and there's so many great examples of this Mm -hmm. in your business. So let's talk through a couple of those uh, uh, examples of what a fixed mindset might look like is if somebody is like, Hey, this isn't working for me or what, or, um, Hey, your website could maybe use a little bit of work. It's immediate defensive. Mm -hmm. It's immediate. That's not going to work. I can't Mm -hmm. do that. It's too hard. Mm -hmm. I am not smart enough. I, I, there's not enough business or she's going to steal my client. Mm-hmm. You know, it's this immediate, like you get your hackles up of like, mm-hmm. eh, like, that, eh, eh, you know, and, and having that mindset of like, nope, nope, not going to do it. Not going right. to happen. No, I don't like it. I don't want to do that. I don't, you know, and versus, oh, okay. How can I improve on that? What else is true about that? Okay. That person maybe spoke to me that way, but maybe what they're saying, maybe I can take a little piece of that Mm -hmm. and, and tweak it and change it. And it's not just the hard. No, it's Mm -hmm. that it's opening yourself up to the question of, okay, how can I take that information and change it? And one of the, my husband and I have done some like marriage, like we did a marriage course. And one of the things she said in there is that you can never be angry when you're curious. Mm -hmm. And I love that thought of like, you can't be angry and curious at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling that anger and that defensive, uh, instead, why don't you get curious and be like, Mm -hmm. why did they say that? What is it about this that I don't understand? How can I change this? You know, and so asking those questions and getting curious, I think can just be a really great way to overcome some of that angry or fixed mindset. I was just listening to a podcast with David French. He's a Christian um, writer for the New York Times, and he writes a lot of very thoughtful 
thought provoking pieces for the New York Times. And he was saying that um, being self-confident about who we are also means that we can be curious. When we feel confident about who we are and what we're doing and about God, then it also invites curiosity. And I love mm. curiosity. Um, Brene Brown also talks about curiosity in terms of wonder and awe, A-W-E, awe. And, and we need to have more of that in our lives when we yes. want to have that growth mindset. It invites questions and opportunities and possibilities and learning because I know what I believe to be true. And so I can, I can allow questions and ideas, even from people who aren't Christians or hold a different view than I do, because I know what I believe and I'm confident in that. And I'm not angry about it. I just believe what I believe because I've studied the word and I've lived it out. I can ask questions and I can look at the possibilities and, and I can, you know, partner with other people because I know there's plenty of room at the table. There's plenty of clients for everybody. I don't have to fight. We don't have to be, you know, in competition. All of that comes from having our mind set on the right thing, um, which truly is God and, and what he wants to do through us. And being able to filter all those questions mm -hmm. through, is it right? Is it noble? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, worthwhile? So I, I love that perspective. I also want to tell you, our minds are really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. Like God created, it's, it's, our bodies are so amazing and our brains. I mean, scientists don't even know half of what our brain does and how it mm -hmm. works and all this stuff. And so our minds are really, really powerful. And I, we want to be able to tap into that in the right way. And so I read, uh, according to some research, the average person has 60,000 thoughts per day. I think women probably have. I was going to say, yes. we overthink things, <laughs> yes. especially like me. I know I overthink things a yes. lot. Yes. Um, and you, you think about, let's say average 60,000 thoughts per day. And what's concerning about that is that 75% of the thoughts that you're thinking are negative. Mm -hmm. So 75% of the things that are coming into your brain are like, that's terrible. That's bad. She looks terrible. She's overweight. I'm terrible. I'm overweight. Mm -hmm. You know, those things that we're constantly telling to ourselves. And then the even scarier part is that 95% of the thoughts that we think are the same thoughts mm -hmm. we thought yesterday. Yeah. So if you are telling yourself negative thoughts all the time, mm -hmm. then that means every day, all day long, you are just telling yourself the same negative thought. I can't do this. I could never make that much money. I am not good at this. I don't have any gifts. God, God has abandoned me. You know, all mm -hmm. these things that we think about that are just outright lies. And we create that reality. We, when we believe that, when we say that over and over and over, we believe that and we act that out as if it were yep. true because our brain doesn't know the difference between us telling ourselves lies and the truth. And so they believe it. Our brain believes it as truth. And we act that out in our lives. And I, I always try and think about the things that are coming in my mind. And I really do struggle with this myself is would I say those things to my children about my children or right. to my spouse or to right. my best friend? No. So why are we Never. allowing that to happen over and over? And we, the, you said the mind is powerful and the Holy Spirit is powerful to partner with us to overcome that. That's the Holy Spirit's job is to advocate for us and in our lives. And so we need to tap into that power of the Holy Spirit to, to partner with us because gosh, 75% being negative and then just on repeat. It's like a tape on repeat over and over. We're doing a lot of damage to ourselves with that type of mindset. And it grieves our father and it grieves mm -hmm. our Holy Spirit. Like, I mean, honestly, when you hear the word grief, like that is not just sadness. That is like deep down in your core of what, what that looks like. And so we need to be taking captive of our thoughts and mm -hmm. be thinking through things because yeah, what if we heard our children saying those things mm -hmm. to themselves? Like mm -hmm. we would be, that's how God, we are God's children mm -hmm. and it grieves him to hear those things. So here's what I love. Um, the message says about this. The world is unprincipled. It's dog eat dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair, but we don't live or fight our battles that way. Never have and never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation. They are for demolishing that entirely massive corrupt culture. Oh, down we use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, 
fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. And I love the way that it says that. Even just like the words of like, it's dog eat dog out there. Like that is what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what, what do we do? What do we do knowing this about the world, knowing that we also have the tools at hand, you know, how, how do we fight that not combatively, but how do we fight that thinking that isn't helpful and, and move into, you know, what God would have us do with mindset. And even Romans 12, two says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve of what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And I love that of like testing and approving. And that is what we need our minds to be doing. And that is where when you start say that mindset of like, I'm not good enough. Well, test that. Are you not good enough? Well, then that's saying, guess what? God's not good enough and can't do stuff through you. That's a lie, you know? And so it's breaking down those things in your mind of being able to take those thoughts captive and approving them and testing them against what God has to say. So let's talk about practical steps then and combating the mental blocks that you have in your business. And we talked about transferring our mind. We talked about fixed growth versus mind, uh, fixed versus growth mindset. And so what are some practical ways that we can do this? We've all had breakthrough aha moments in your life and in your business. Sometimes it's listening to a podcast. Sometimes it's on a coaching call. Sometimes it's reading God's word. Like there are lots of ways that we have these breakthrough moments in our life, in our business. And a lot of times those come from digging into your mind and figuring out what's blocking you. And we have a great episode, episode um, 39 about roadblocks, where it talks about naming it, praying about it. You know, Sarah breaks it down for us with the five hands. Um, in order to really come through. So what are those things that are holding you back and those roadblocks that you're having? And that can be really helpful. So go back to that and listen to that if you really want like some practical ways to do that. But we want to figure out how to overcome what the world would say is holding you back. Yeah. So some practical tips that we have for you today on how to do that, because really, you know, we can, we can talk about the philosophy of all of this and definitions, but you know, at the end of the day, like, what do I do? What's, what's my response? And so uh, one way to do that is to really just sit down and be in a quiet space, turn your phone off, get rid of the distractions. All too often we, you know, we've got all this stuff going on. And so sit down and, and be able to start to examine that for yourself, invite God in, sit in quiet and stillness for a little while to see what he has to say and start to write down what is actually holding you back in your business to name it. We always say that what um, you don't name is going to rule and reign over you in your business and in your life. And so we need to start um, by naming what those things are. So practically you can name those things. And then we really want to encourage you is maybe make a list, start a journal, write down those lists of things that are holding you back. And you might have to get really vulnerable. I mean, I heard somebody say, this is kind of funny that she said, I didn't think I was going to be successful in business because I didn't have a white kitchen because I didn't have like the perfect white kitchen on Instagram that everybody has. And I didn't think I would make it. And you think to yourself, that's so dumb, but yet that's what our minds mm -hmm. are telling us. They're mm -hmm. telling us these dumb lies. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes we have to dig really deep to get mm -hmm. to that. But it, it might be a lie of like, I don't deserve to make six figures in my business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So write that down. And yeah. then you know, find some Bible verses, maybe write down, maybe make a list of 10 things, challenge yourself to write down 10 things that are in your mind that are causing you to be stuck. And then take that list out, go to your, your Bible app, open up your Bible and look at verses that speak to those things specifically of like, I can't make enough money in my business. Well, then you look at like Matthew six, where he tells the story about God takes care of everything. He takes care of the flowers. He takes care. He takes care of the birds. You know, there's so many things that God takes care of that we don't need to be worrying about things like that. Or even in Exodus, like I've just been reading through Exodus uh, as I read through the Bible and like Moses is complaining about, well, I'm not very good with words and I'm kind of tongue tied and I don't know what to do. And God says, he, I love it in this verse. He says, am I not the Lord? Mm -hmm. Go. I mm -hmm. will be with you. And so often we think we need to have all the equipment. We need to be completely equipped in order to go. And the more, the older I get, the more I learn about the Bible, the more I'm like, God equips the called. God does not call the equipped. Like we can't do it on our own. Okay. So in a lot of ways, 
Moses had a fixed mindset there of like, mm-hmm. I can't do this. I'm not mm-hmm. equipped. In all reality, God had equipped him mm-hmm. and also God equipped him along the way. Mm-hmm. So it kind of, it's, you kind of have a both and he calls the equipped and he equips the called. It is both things. Mm-hmm. It is, you do have things within you. You have experiences. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why you're being called to a certain mm-hmm. thing. It's not like usually God calls you a completely out of the blue to be like, Lisa, I think I want you to be a skydiving instructor. Like, yeah. where did, where did that come from? Like, but somehow there's probably some way along the way that it's like, okay, yeah, well, you have been a teacher. You have it, you know, you do have mm-hmm. these skills that you can be yeah. using in these things. And so being able to live in the middle of that, of mm-hmm. like, and just like we said, we can't always be like, dear God, just rain down blessings on right. me without taking the steps forward. You have to do both. And mm-hmm. this is a great way to do that is to write down these lies and then to write down what is true, what God calls us to, what he has equipped you with in the ways to make that mm-hmm. a really beautiful partnership with him. Yeah. And to ask yourself, what would God say to me right now if he were sitting right next to me? I work with a spiritual director and that's one of the questions that she often asks me when I'm like, I don't think I can do this or, you know, whatever. She stops me and she says, what do you think God would say to you and about you right now in this situation? And more often than not, what he would say is something so compassionate and kind and loving. But my fixed mindset has me you know, being more. Another question as you're talking about this with yourself, you know, like having this conversation, what's the lie that I believe and what's the truth that the Bible says is a great question to ask is what would God say if he were sitting before me right now? I work with Hmm. a spiritual director and, um, you know, this is a question that she often poses to me when I'm stuck in a fixed mindset cycle of like, I can't do this. This isn't going well. (laughs) What's going on in my life? And she'll say to me, Sarah, what would God, what would Jesus say to you if he were sitting right next to you right now? And almost every single time, it is something so loving and so caring and so compassionate that God is saying to me, it it, it is never once a harsh tone of condemnation. I want to work with you. I want to partner with you. You don't have to do this on your own. You don't have to live in shame and fear and doubt in this situation because like Moses, am I not the Lord? I will go with you in everything that I've asked you to do. That is still true today. And that partnering for us to to be sanctified and to live out our salvation in our life, that's why Jesus died for us so that we could do that. So we could be free of shame and fear and doubt. And we could have a deep, faithful, intimate relationship with Jesus and the God of the universe to do what he's asked us to do. But if our mind is not fixed on that, if it's not set on that, then no, we really, we can't do anything (laughs) at all. I love that. What a great practical example of like, when you, maybe when you write that list down and then you write the Bible verses down and then you write down, what would God say to me right Mm -hmm. now? And that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's such a great way of just being like, oh, oh yeah, he wouldn't chastise me. He wouldn't tell me I'm not good enough. He wouldn't, you know, say, oh, you're doing it wrong. Like he would just lovingly come alongside Mm -hmm. of you and being, I mean, even in the Bible, he, Mm -hmm. he lovingly chastises his his Mm -hmm. disciples all Mm -hmm. the time, but it's always in a loving way that causes them to grow further. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we want to encourage you to do. Sometimes it's tough love. Sometimes it is. Oh, for sure. You know, yes. Sarah, it's time to get up and get going. We've talked about this and we're going to go, but I'm going to go with you. So let's go right. get going. I mean, so it's not, it's not that it's not tough love and it's not hard. And there's times where it's like, what God would say to me is, Sarah, there's sin in your life and we need to remove that because you can't be in my presence when that sin is there. And so but that's love. That's tr- that's that's right. the deepest kind of love is I'm not going to let you sit here and stay there. And I'm not right. going to make you do the work on your own. We're going to go together and do this together because I am the all powerful God that can do that in you and through you. So beautiful. So beautiful. So we want to tell you, give you more practical ways. I know we've given you a couple, but here's a few more. And we would love to hear what you would add to this list. So tell us on social media, what are some ways that you can, you get your mind correctly and you get your mind set on the right things, mm-hmm. on the things that are above, on the things that are noble and true and all of those things that we talk about in scripture. But here's some things that we want to tell you. 
Number one, garbage in, garbage out. And this is something I try to tell my kids sometimes. If you're putting a lot of junk into your mind, whether that's through the books that you're reading, whether it's through the podcasts you're listening to, whether it's conversations that you're having, maybe you're in a really toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. I've had to remove some toxic mm -hmm. relationships from my life because they aren't healthy. Mm -hmm. And so what are you filling your mind with? And making sure that you're you're putting healthy, good things into your mind so that you're centering your mind on good, healthy things instead of junk that's out there in the world. Yeah. The, the cheap, the cheap stuff that just isn't very helpful. Uh, then other, the other thing that we um, talk about a lot on here is Lisa and I are big believers in being in God's word, reading it daily. You know, it says that the word is our daily bread. We need it every single day. That can be overwhelming. I know that when it comes to things like exercise and reading the Bible, having to make one more decision, <laughs> is exhausting so to me. Yep. And so I actually personally love following a Bible reading plan. A lot of times it just opens the door for I'm going to read this passage and then I'm going to dig into another passage, but it's just one less decision that I have to make. And so right. um, the one Bible plan that we love and we recommend all the time is the Bible recap. Lisa and I have both done it. We love it. Tara Lee Cobble is the one who um, put that together. She's amazing. She knows God's word. She speaks the truth. Um, and so you can find that online at just the Bible recap.com. She's on Instagram. Um, she's also got the Bible reading plan in the Bible app, um, the you version app. So it's super, super easy to access. You can follow the plan and you're not making any decisions, extra decisions. It's just read it. And then she has a five to six minute podcast that you listen to every day. You don't have to start on January 1st. You can start anytime um, during the year and just read through it. I know Lisa just started it at the beginning of 2020. I kind of got behind. So I am going to finish the New Testament now coming up in April. And then hopefully I'll just start right back over with reading God's word and, and knowing the truth and memorizing it um, and, and watching for God's character and who he is. So that when I do have a fixed mindset or my mind isn't set on the right thing, I can come back to what I know to be true in the Bible. That's so good. I love that one for sure. Next is journaling. We talk about that. We talked about this just a minute ago in one of the really practical steps, but having that journal that you can write down your thoughts that you can write down. There's something about when you see it on paper and you're just like, oh, is that what's really in my mind? Mm -hmm. Is that what I'm really thinking about? It's a little convicting, but also just being able to see it written down and see how your mind changes over time and to, to be able to combat that with truth and just to be able to start journaling. I've never been very good at this, but I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. And that I'm, you know, but when I, now that I'm doing my Bible, it's like I, it's like you stack habits on top mm -hmm. of each other. Atomic Habits yeah. stuff, talks about that. But, you know, now that I'm on in the habit of reading my Bible every single day, well, now I'm journaling along along with that. And then last week we talked about doing the, the prayers for your business. And I mm -hmm. pray, I write my prayer every single, mm -hmm. every single day in my journal. And it's just a great practice to have of getting your thoughts out onto paper. Cause it's just mm -hmm. amazing how different they are when they're, cause in our minds, they work so quickly. Mm -hmm. Our mind is just constantly off zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah. And so when you really are sitting down thinking about it and writing it in your journal, it really just makes, it just helps your mind to focus on what you're trying mm -hmm. to focus on. Yeah. I hated journaling for a long time. People would always be like, oh, I love journaling. It was like a big thing like 10 years ago. And I was like, oh, I'm just not a journaler. But I've just had to figure out how that works for me and what it looks like yep. for me. And it's not necessarily pages and pages every day for me. Sometimes it's a short prayer. You know, it's a good reminder that Lord help me. That's a prayer too. <laughs> Sometimes I just yep. need to write that out. You know, Lord, thank you. That's also a prayer. But having that journal and now that I've done it for a while, being able to go back and look and see God's faithfulness over the years, yes. that also helps so you beautiful. be able to trust him in the future. So journaling, that's a great one. Another one that I don't think we give enough credence to enough power to is surrounding ourselves with people who are going to encourage us and challenge us, not just agree with everything we say, but, you know, as iron sharpens iron, we're rubbing those rough edges off, but being around those people who encourage you, we talked about accountability at the beginning of March. You can go back and listen to that episode, but people who are going to hold you accountable to your personal leadership of, did you do what you said you were going to do? Are you living the way that you said you were going to live? Um, and that can be really, really helpful. Being in church, being in a church community, fellowshipping with other people on a weekly basis. Right. That is Small part groups. of our Christian yeah. walk is being a part of all of that um, and, and finding those really good people. And if you don't have them, pray and ask God, he will bring those people into your lives. You can go back and listen to our Biz Bestie episode um, and to, to help you find some of those 
those people, Lisa and I have a story that was only ordained by God in us meeting. And that's because we prayed and we asked God to answer. And he did. And we took the steps forward. That's right. <laughs> we, we stepped we out in faith. a lot. Yeah. Yep. Yep. The next thing that you can do is really ask for help. And asking is the same as helping. And it's like the, it's like the masterminding thing. It's like, we love to be able to help people and we love people to be able to help us. And sometimes Mm -hmm. being vulnerable Mm -hmm. and asking or telling people, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm struggling with this or Mm -hmm. whatever. Then allowing people to speak that into you, be careful Mm -hmm. again, be careful about who you're doing this with, but having somebody to come alongside you that you feel comfortable with and vulnerable with to be able to ask that. The last practical tip that we have for you today, there's lots more out there, um, but the the last one that we know um, to be true is that when you memorize God's word, or even when you're reading it, to speak the truth out loud. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen them before, but uh, when I was teaching in in, uh, in the schools and stuff, um, the little kids, little kindergartners and first graders, they have these little plastic pipes that, that, that you can buy that they hold up to their um, ear and their mouth, kind of like a phone when, you know, old, old school phones that used to have. And they would read that way. So when they were reading out loud in a classroom that was a little bit louder, they could speak the word into the little um, pipe and the pipe would channel their sound up to their ear so they could actually hear themselves um, reading and they could get better at reading because they could hear themselves talking. And that's what we have to do with God's word. We need to channel those words from our lips into our ears so that we can hear it and know it and get it into our minds. There's something very, very powerful about speaking that word out loud. Your kids can hear you. The people around you can hear you. I mean, maybe not at Starbucks. That might be a little bit weird, but (laughs) you can speak the truth out loud. And there's something very, very powerful about that. You know, I love, um, there's a verse in second Chronicles where the Israelites don't know what to do and their, their prayer is, Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are ever on you. And there are times that I just say that out loud. I'm sitting at my computer and I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are ever on you. And I hear that. And it's like, okay, I believe that to be true. Help me Lord in, in what I have to do in my life, in my business. Those are all such great tips and tricks. We hope that you guys put some of these into effect and that you guys realize that our minds are very powerful that we need to Mm -hmm. make sure that our minds are being set on things above and that we are filtering things and that we are saying good things to each other and that we are rooting those things in God's truth, God's word, and that we know that he is for us, you guys. Mm -hmm. He is for us. And that is so powerful that we have the God of the universe on our side and that we so often don't tap into it. And that's so sad. But having that mindset of like, I serve the God of the universe and that he has good things for me that might be hard to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I hate that when people are just like, oh, God's going to bless me all the time. And that is not what we were talking about. And that is not what we are about. But really being open to what God is Mm -hmm. calling us to. And I love that verse that you said of just like, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are fixed on you. And I think Mm -hmm. that's just a great place to end today. 